Hello guys. Today we're gonna start talking about support settlements and see how what happened with you have a structure and the support suddenly suffer displacement for any reason. I don't know, you can have a clay layer that hasn't been consolidated yet or is consolidating. You can have lack of compaction, something. Uh, let's see what happens if you have any type of a structure like this subject to a load and suddenly one or both supports settle. Let's say that this support settles and this support also settles or, or on one of them. Let's talk about one of them. What happened if this support suddenly came in? Certain amount, small displacement. If this is statically determinate like it is, well, actually nothing is going to happen. This thing is going to act and it's going to come like that. This, set, this support is going to stay. The other support is going to stay there. And the whole structure is going to move by whatever amount this originally set here. Now this is not the same case when you have something that is statically indeterminate. When you have something that is, and this is one of the advantages and disadvantages, the, the topics, uh, when, when we discuss those topics in class, advantages and disadvantages for statically determinate and determinate, this is one of the differences between both of them. Now this is a statically indeterminate beam, and suddenly, let's say that this is a distributed load, and then you have several supports, A, B, C, D. And let's say that you have a settlement at the support B. Support B is going to settle by delta B, and support C is going to settle by delta C. What is going to happen here? Well, if it was like that, it doesn't matter because the structure is going to just go together and you're gonna have you're not going to have if those settlements are small you're not gonna have additional stress produced by those by those settlements or addi additional uh, deformations in use in the in the elastic beam in the statically determined elastic beam now what happened here is if this settles uh, whatever amount it is I don't know delta B and this also settles a different amount or the same amount, it doesn't matter, delta C, like that. The whole structure, this is not settling, this is not settling. So the whole structure is going to be subject to additional deformations and additional stresses due to that caving of the supports. And this type of behavior is going to introduce also additional moment and moment redistribution and internal stresses to that type of structures. So how do we account for that? Well, the procedure is basically the same. Let's say that you want to uh, solve that, that beam, and using the method of the forces, and then we use B and C as our redundant. Then we will create our primary structure. like that and our primary structure is going to be suffering a deflection like this remember this is called primary structure it's going to it's going to be uh, producing some support some displacement in the original beam at the point C and at the point O I'm not talking about settlements. We still don't have the settlements. Imagine that we don't have the settlements, only the beam. We are going to solve for that beam. Now, originally what we did, eliminate the two redundants. Why two redundants? Because this is a statically indeterminate of the second degree. Now, what do you do? You create here two virtual structures. One virtual structure, I'm going to push it at this point. The other virtual structure, I'm going to push it back at this point with a force of 1. That force of 1, remember, is going to do this. And in this case, it's going to be doing this. And this value here is 
called FCC, which is the flexibility coefficient at the point C when the load is applied at the point C. This is called FCB. FBB, flexibility coefficient at the point B because of the load is applied at the point B. But you also have this also deformation produced by that or deflection produced by that unit load. And this is called FCB, which will be the, the flexibility coefficient at C when you have a load applied at B. And you have also this one, which is called FBC, which is the flexibility coefficient at B when you have a load applied at C. And remember, this is also all the time ABCD here and ABCD. <coughs> What is, a, what is a mechanism that we used before? Well, the mechanism that we used before to solve for this was a, this one, delta zero, delta zero, delta B zero, plus this value, which was FBB multiplied by BY, the reaction BY, the redundant BY, plus this value, FBC, not times one by times CY, and that's supposed to be zero. But now it's not zero, because now we have this residual settlement or this settlement that it has been produced over there. So that, instead of zero, is going to be equal to that displacement. And in the other case, we're going to have the original displacement here, CO plus this one, F. CB multiplied by BY plus FCC multiplied by CY has to be equal to this residual displacement that you have over there. And we solve this type of equation. That's the only difference. Now, there are going to be some variances, uh, variations of these. Uh, because what happens if now you have a similar or the same approach, but instead of a uh, instead of just uh, these two caving in, now you have settlements in the exterior supports also. Well, if you have, let's say that you have the same case now. One, two, three. And you have the load on top of that, and this is A, B, C, D. But now suddenly, everything caves in. So this support ends here, this support ends here, these other supports and somewhere here, and these other supports and I don't know, and somewhere over here. Over here. Now what is happening is this. Uh, the final, the form shape, it will be this. Like that. And this is, I'm gonna call that delta A but do not confuse that with this delta B, okay? Or the, this delta zero here. This is gonna be delta delta B, the, the total amount. This is gonna be the total amount that the support settles, and this is gonna be the total amount that this support settles here, delta D. When we do our, our equation, this equation now, and we apply that, we eliminate the same two redundants, and that's what we have to do. However, you have to be careful here because uh, I'm looking for a ruler that I should have here, but I don't have. So I'm going to use this as a ruler. Actually, this is cooler than a ruler. So look what happened here. What happened here, if I make a straight line between these two, If I make this a straight line between this settlement here and this settlement here, then you're going to find some actual relative settlement for this one and some actually relative settlement for this one. So when we establish our equations, it, the settlement that I'm looking for is not the total one, it's that one. And that is called by some textbooks like residual or relative. Relative is a better term. Relative settlement. So whenever you do this thing, you apply the same procedure. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and everything else. But that, instead of being equal to the total displacement, 
in this case because this displacement was the, the real displacement that that suffered. Now that will be equal in this case to delta Vr and this will be equal to delta Cr. The rest, if we have the, the distributed load here, of course, we follow the same procedure, but the way we calculate it or the way we are gonna uh, study the settlement, uh, it has to be relative to the others. In this case, it was also relative to the others. But if you if you draw a line between the point A and the point D, guess what? This is, this is delta Vr and this is delta CR, they are the same. But in this case, they are not because this point came down and this point came up. It could be also settlement or it could be also a <coughs> negative settlement. I mean, the, the, the structure can go up. And that's why you have to determine. In this case, of course, you have to maintain this as a positive number, for example, and then this is going to be negative or vice versa. But they are different because this is going down and this is coming up in the relative uh, real. Uh, okay, now I'm going to go, I'm going to solve one example. Uh, keep watching, please.